Doom on the NES. Vice Magazine talks about the NES. I project Doom onto a copy of Vice Magazine using an NES. Vice Project Doom on the NES. If there's going to be a Nintendo Entertainment Celebration on this channel, you better believe that I'm getting in on that. So today, we're talking about one of the glut of lesser known, but still really great games on the NES. Vice Project Doom, developed by ICOM and released by American Sammy. Vice Project Doom is one of those post-SNES, NES releases. So it managed to fly under the radar for many, despite being on the cover of Nintendo Power. It's a genre mashup with driving and shooting stages, but it is primarily an action platformer in the vein of Ninja Gaiden. Sammy, now the parent company of Sega, if you can believe that, put out a handful of good games on the NES, but this is arguably their best one. ICOM also put out a handful of NES games, but with, uh, well, with stuff like Astanax and Amagon on that list, uh, I would say there's no argument that this is their best NES effort. In fact, by the time this game was released, they were a subsidiary of Sammy. The story here is patently ridiculous, aping not only Ninja Gaiden's gameplay style, but also the cutscenes. And if you thought Ninja Gaiden's storylines were contrived, well, just try to follow Vice's. It puts you in the shoes of square-jawed vice detective Quinn Hart through a standard late 80s, early 90s drugs are bad storyline with a drop of Big Trouble in Little China that quickly turns into a poor man's X-Files and ends with a twist that I can only call Shyamalan-esque. It tries to be a noir story and a sci-fi story like Blade Runner, but it falls way short. Though there is some choice dialogue. They talk a lot about the stuff in the early going. The stuff? I love that movie! For my money, it's the best Larry Cohen-Michael Moriarty collaboration. Later on, they talk about green slime. I found source. Green slime. Don't we all know the source of the green slime? I don't know. <laughs> Guess not. Suffice to say the story is very silly, but I mean if you're into very silly sci-fi video game stories from the early 90s, you'll probably get a big kick out of it. Anyways, enough about the story, let's talk about the gameplay. The game starts with a driving stage, even before the title screen, which is actually a cool touch, one of the few cinematic things this game does that really works. The driving stages are vertically scrolling shooters. They look really good like the rest of the game, and when you hit stuff on the road, there's this cool effect of it flying up towards your face. Once you finish that stage, it's onto the first side-scrolling stage. The side-scrolling stages really borrow heavily from Ninja Gaiden, picking up the style of the life bar and... birds? Oh, come on, not the birds! However, instead of picking up items from lanterns, you always have three weapons available. This, uh, well, I've read that it's a laser whip, but I mean, come on, that's a lightsaber, right? I mean, who swings a whip like that? The animation on it is really nice, and it can hit things above and behind you if the animation hits them. The second weapon is a gun that's, uh, well, mostly useless, honestly. The range isn't a lot further than the sword, and it's less powerful. It's only useful in very particular situations. The last weapon is a grenade. These are very useful in a few boss fights, so they're good to hang on to if you can. You start each life with 20 bullets and 5 grenades. Enemies will drop more, but they're gone if you lose a life. The lightsaber, on the other hand, can be used endlessly. Enemies will also drop health pickups in the form of fully roasted turkeys, or maybe it's a pork chop like in Castlevania, who knows, but they also drop point bonuses and coins. If you collect 100 coins, just like in Super Mario Bros., you'll get a 1-up. Of course, the game is really, really generous with checkpoints and gives you infinite continues, so the 1-ups aren't super necessary, but, uh... Thanks anyways, Icom. I guess. 
cart controls really well in these sections, running smoothly, responsive to climbing ladders and attacking quickly when the B button is pressed. He can even run while crouching, which is very useful against enemies that use projectiles. The last gameplay style are the shooting stages. These stages scroll to the right and you control an aiming reticle, sort of like um, Operation Wolf or Gotcha, the sport, if uh, that reference means anything to you. Of course, that was a zapper game, and this doesn't allow use of the zapper. Which is kind of sad, but anyways, that's not important. The point is that you scroll through, you use your reticle to shoot guys. Uh, B button shoots your gun, A button throws grenades. But they do use the ammo you've collected in the scrolling stages. So make sure you're conserving, because it is possible to run out. To be honest, these are the weakest stages, but they're very brief. Like the driving stages, there aren't many. In fact, there are only two of each. The vast majority of the game is side-scrolling action platforming goodness. But these segments do a great job of breaking things up a little bit. Vice Project Doom isn't going to do anything you haven't seen before, but it is going to do some things you have very well. Sometimes execution is what really matters. Then if you've been through all the Castlevanias and the Ninja Gaidens, this is definitely something that is going to uh, push your buttons. So I'd say give it a try. It's better than Castlevania 2 or Ninja Gaiden 3, if you ask me. It's not a hard game, but it's a fun game. And that's going to do it. I'm Roger the Retro Gaming Puppet. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time on Obscure Old Games. Oh, <laughs>